a current Antioch student who shares my concerns but has been afraid to challenge the orthodoxy has shared a couple of documents with me that were sent to the student body about me from school administration. And I would like to share those with you right now. I've already posted these to my Substack, but I am going to put them up here so that everybody can see them and I'll, I'll go ahead and read them out loud as well. In addition, I was contacted by the school directly to see if I would like to register for classes in the spring. And um, this was an unusual email that I received because typically emails about registration come from the registrar and for, uh, from someone in human resources and they are sent out to all the students in mass. And this one was addressed directly to me and it came from the department chair. And so it did seem a little strange. Also, I am still blocked out from accessing large amounts of my student information, coursework that I've done, other student resources folders, I'm still not able to access these. And I am not able to do other things like when a couple of times I've received um, items that I can't open because they are protected and for, only for people who are in the student community. So I'm able to see that, that I am, some restrictions have been placed on my account. It's sort of functioning as like a ghost account where it appears that I have a student account, but I've actually been um, severely restricted in what I'm able to do. So uh, I have written back and I've, I've responded to the, the email that I received as well as to the emails that were sent out to the student body. And I will read you my response as well after I first show you what the school has sent me. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. All right, so this is sent to all the students from uh, Sean Fitzgerald, who is the CEO. And he says, greetings CMHC, CES faculty and students. As the Dean of the Graduate School of Counseling, Psychology and Therapy, I wanted to take a moment to share with you a position statement developed by the AUNE, which is Antioch, New England, and AUS, Antioch, Seattle, counseling departments in response to material posted online expressing ideologies in opposition to where we as a community stand in our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. I stand with our counseling faculty in our unwavering commitment to ensuring social justice remains front and center in our programs. And I firmly believe there is no place in our community for those expressing racist and transphobic ideologies. A primary crisis team consisting of the Dean of CPT, Sean Fitzgerald, the CEO of the Seattle campus, Ben Pryor, University Council, Mary Granger, and the Associate Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Melissa Kirk, has been established to serve as the first point of contact in matters related to these developments. Melissa will set up a Google Doc for the AUNE AUS community to share updates, concerns, pose questions. This will give us a single location versus email to capture information needed to inform decision making. Access to this document will be shared ASAP. I am proud to be working with the faculty and student body who are clearly committed and aligned with the university's mission. Sean Fitzgerald. So this was shared, I guess, to everybody. It wasn't shared to me. And here is what they, here's the document that he attached to that. AUNE and AUS Allied Counseling Department, Commitment to Social Justice in Counseling. So this is their position statement. We are aware of material posted online by one person expressing white supremacy, transphobia, and other harmful ideologies in direct opposition to our professional ethical guidelines as counselors. These posts directly impact our university and program community and the integrity of the counseling profession. We will not engage in a battle of hate speech on social media. The AUNE and AUS Allied Counseling Department stand in solidarity, reaffirming the following statement. The AUNE and AUS Allied Counseling Department is committed to ensuring social justice is at the heart of the work we do as counselors, educators, supervisors, and researchers. Simply put, we believe in equal rights and equitable opportunities for all. As highlighted in our mission statement, we confront oppression and injustice and bring forth intersectionality in our teaching so that future counselors may enter into the profession with the ability to work with diverse individuals, groups, and social systems within a multicultural global community. 
The department is guided by the ethics and competencies set forth by our professional organization, the American Counseling Association, and endorses the public statements of anti-racism, ban on conversion therapy, access to gender aligned restrooms, and many others that promote the dignity and welfare of people. Further, we have received specialized accreditation, accreditation from KCREP, ensuring that all 900 plus counseling programs offered by 400 plus universities under accreditation teach multicultural counseling, social justice, and advocacy. Here at Antioch, we aim to integrate these concepts throughout every educational experience we provide. While we may be challenged at times, we unapologetically value diversity, equity, and inclusion, and we stand proud in our pursuit for mental health and wellness for all. We strive to do our best for our students, the clients you will serve, and for every member of our community. We are committed to creating a community of care and learning that will not leave anyone behind who embraces the values of the counseling profession. We are honored that you have chosen to learn with us. Students, along with faculty and staff, are encouraged to refrain from engaging in unproductive dialogue via social media. Watching this misdirected video will have the unintended consequences of giving more power to this voice. Instead, please reach out to your faculty advisors, program directors, department chairs, and student community groups for support and guidance. As a reminder, all CMHC students have access to WellConnect to receive 24 seven support and short-term counseling for free. And then he gives a phone number for that. So, okay, I'll read you my response back to the invitation to register and this encompasses my response to this, this uh, position statement. So here we go, let's see. Dear Dr. Corey and Antioch administration, thank you for your email inviting me to register for the spring term. Because I have invested a great deal in this master's program and am close to the end of my coursework, I am considering the option of continuing to take the rest of my remaining classes. However, I would like reassurance from the university that I will not face any retaliation for speaking out about my concerns regarding the partisan and ideological biases of the program. I would like full access to my student accounts, prior courses, and student resource folders reinstated. And I would like to have full access to everything all other Antioch students can access, including the Google Drive documents created to discuss me and my YouTube channel. I also want to make it clear that I will continue to speak my mind openly in public and in school as guided by my conscience. This includes criticisms of Antioch's interpretation of social justice, inclusion of critical race theory and counselor training, promotion of radical gender ideology that seeks to erase the word woman, and attempts by administration and faculty to politically influence and intimidate students with biased partisan rhetoric. I am also unable to sign Antioch's civility pledge because the first two lines of it constitute a theological framework with which I do not align. I would like reassurance that my free expression of my beliefs and conscientious, conscientious objection to this pledge will not result in academic or administrative retaliation. Furthermore, I would like a public written apology from the school for the accusations you leveled at me that I have expressed white supremacist and transphobic views. I have not done so. And I view Antioch's encouragement to students and faculty to avoid exposure to my actual arguments and instead accept this gross misrepresentation as an incitement that puts me at risk of being personally targeted and potentially harmed. I have previously requested a dialogue with the school to discuss a full reimbursement of my tuition. My requests have been ignored by the administration. If Antioch will not grant me the terms I have outlined above, I would like to again put forward this request. Respectfully yours, J. Leslie Elliott. So I feel like with this position statement, they have, they have given it my argument a great gift in a way because if you've been following my videos and if you've been listening to what i've been saying you will know that i have not expressed white supremacist views far from it i do not believe in white supremacy or the supremacy of any racial or ethnic group i believe that we all deserve to be treated as human beings and to be allowed the opportunity to be seen as individuals and this this is this position that i am taking this this argument that i am making 
is accounted for within the social justice framework. There's a response for this. The response to what I just said is that the default is centering whiteness. The default is white supremacy. So if you are not actively fighting against whiteness and putting white people down and assuming the marginalization and the inferior status of people of color, then you are promoting white supremacy and you are a racist. So for anybody who uh, maybe thought that I was exaggerating, I, 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 I hope that you'll go back and actually listen to the words that I've said and the things that I've talked about in these videos and ask yourself, does that seem like white supremacy? Does that seem like somebody who's promoting white supremacy? Because I have been directly accused in this position statement of exactly that. Also, transphobia. I have not talked about what I think about uh, transgender issues. I haven't spoken about that at all. I, I could go into that at length. We could have a conversation about that. I have talked about concerns about believing in the trans child and putting children on a path to medical alterations, physical and medical alterations of their bodies. I have talked about that. And I have also talked about my concern around replacing the word woman with terms that are vulgar and, reply, and, and, and describe us based on our, on our genitals. Uh, these, these I have spoken about, but I have not offered any transphobic opinions in the least. So if you have been following what I've been saying and you've been listening to um, my actual words, seeing this should stand in stark contrast and should clearly make the point that we're not dealing with reasonable people here. These are ideologically possessed people and what they are arguing now, uh, they are coming right out and encouraging people to avoid listening to my actual arguments, but positing that my arguments have been racist and transphobic. So it's just a very clear demonstration of the bias and the very heavy handed attempts to influence the student body. And uh, thank you for bearing witness to this. I will continue to work towards a solution that pushes back against this. If they will take me back and allow me into the courses, as much as I think that seems like a hostile and scary environment, I'll go and I will be there and I will not be quiet. I will say what I think, I will be respectful. I will always be respectful, but I will say what I think. I will work hard to formulate clear intellectual arguments. Every time I face this stuff, I am done being quiet. I, I suspect that they will not let me in and then we'll just cross that bridge when we come to it. So thank you for your, <laughs> Thank you for being along on this journey with me. Thanks for watching.